Hi, I'm Brian Zip, Executive Director of the Somerville Media Center. And I'm Joe Lynch of the Somerville Media Center Board of Directors. It is our pleasure to be the opening act for the first ever Somerville Media Center Telethon fundraiser to support the work of Somerville's very own television, radio, and media arts education center. Founded in 1984, known at the time as Somerville Community Access Television, commonly referred to as SCAT TV for many years, we had one mission, to inform, educate, and entertain the Somerville public via cable TV. As the years and technology advanced, our product line greatly expanded to encompass not only television, but youth outreach and education programs, technology literacy programs for seniors, the founding and management of Boston Free Radio by the late Doug Ashford, and our edition of Somerville Neighborhood News Program six years ago. You know, Brian, I haven't been around since the founding, but it has been my pleasure to host and produce for 10 years my own talk show here at the station. Perhaps um, you've heard of that little show, Greater Somerville? No? Brian, we've got to get you to watch more community access television. But just to show you how fast technology has changed in those 10 years, uploading my show to the web was arduous, individual YouTube channels were a pie-in-the-sky idea, Facebook was in its infancy, and Snapchat was just that, a chat. Since then, the Somerville Media Center has tried to keep up with those technological changes. Those changes are coming at breakneck speed and having an effect on where our major source of funding is. Like all community access media centers, our prime source of funding comes from, where else? The cable companies. The groundbreaking legislation that created the very concept of community cable stations comes from a small fee levied on Comcast and RCM cable subscribers. Those fees are then distributed to not only the municipalities to be used for the government and educational TV stations here in Somerville, but also to provide you, the Somerville public, with a place to conduct free speech via your own television and radio shows. But you know, Brian, technology helped to create our terrific organization, but technology also threatens the very financial foundation of our existence. The more products now being offered, not just by the cable companies, but by newer innovations such as Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, YouTube, Facebook Live, they have and they will continue to have a negative effect on our funding. The more subscribers who cut the cord, so to speak, with Comcast and RCN, the less money there is available to support organizations like ours, the Somerville Media Center. And that, dear viewer, is where you come in. We are asking you, the Somerville public, to help us to continue to provide you with the best in hyperlocal information, news, events, politics, education, and entertainment programs well into the future by contributing whatever you can to this fundraising campaign. And we've made it very easy. All you have to do is go to somervillemedia.org and hit that ever-present donate button. You don't have access to the web? No problem. Send us a check in any amount to Somerville Media Center, 90 Union Square, Somerville, Mass. That's it. If you want to continue watching our spectacular lineup of entertainment shows, like the oldest continuing running cable access show, Dead Air Live, or Somerville Overcoming Addiction, the DIY show, The Lady in the Yellow Jacket, Words on Film, Poet to Poet, Writer to Writer, Heavy Leather Topless Dance Party, Henry Parker Presents, Somerville Pundits, Fallon's Daily Toast, The Somerville Line, and there's so many more, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, someone. Um, well, let's not forget our terrific radio superstars, like Boston Come Through, Villain's Den, Donnie Superstar, Steubens, Steubens, thank you, <clears throat> Words on Film, and your favorite, Mr. Bear's Violet Hour Saloon. My favorite. And so many more. Well, let's see, isn't there that little show with the old guy, that old guy does, you know, I believe it's a multi-award winning show, and uh, I think it's the only one to win a national award. N not JoJo's Dream Card, she only won an Emmy. Wasn't it called Greater Summer, Summer something? Greatest Somerville. That's it. Yeah, that's it. But you know, Brian, just because we can talk for 28 minutes without taking a breath doesn't mean talk show hosts deserve all the credit. Without the superb talent of the Media Center staff, behind the scenes, past and present, none of these shows would be as successful and entertaining. 
And let's not forget the hundreds of dedicated volunteers and interns we've seen over the years. Together, in unison, with all of our combined talents, we've made Somerville Media Center one of, if not the, premier community access stations in the nation. So now, we need your help. For the next 12 hours, we will be cable casting on Channel 3, periodically live streaming on Facebook, continuously streaming on our website, and simulcasting on Boston Free Radio, our first ever telethon to raise funds for our and your future Somerville Media Center. We've got a terrific lineup of talent, information, public service specials, and more. But first, the weather. But don't forget, go to somervillemedia.org and donate now. You know, let's get a little energy into this. I'm going to stand up, throw away the chair, so that I could really get a chance to talk to you, first of all, about the Somerville Media Center, which, is, which has brought me here today to help them get some of uh, your, your empire's currency so that they could continue to live. So consider, uh, perhaps, I don't know, give them a little bit of your money, transfer the numbers from your, however your economy works, from your thing over to theirs. Just go to the web zone, you'll figure it out. But anyways, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your death spiral today. I'll give you a quick weather forecast today. It's nice. That's really it. It's nice. Low to mid 70s. Uh, you know, some nice blobs. You got some nice high, high up blobs today. And some nice, very nice dry air. That's perfect repentance weather. So if you have any repentance activities today, it'll be a great day to go out there. So of course you're in your death spiral and everyone knows it. And you need to repent to your weather lords. It's really time that you start to consider the fact that you need to repent. Really think about it. You know that you need to repent. Pretty much everyone knows at this point. It's not really a secret anymore, is it? It's pretty easy to figure out. Your uh, death spiral fascists in charge of your uh, .gov seem a little bit too eager to destruct you and your planet. You need to stop your powers and oligarchs from destructing you and your planet. And repent to your weather lords. Because you're in your death spiral. And your death spiral, betwixt you and me, it's getting a little nasty out there. You might be in a death spiral quickening. Well, your death spiral is always quickening when you think about it. But, uh, you know, it's getting a little out of control. I've heard some estimates that you'll be entering dangerous climate change if you haven't already in your location in the next 10 to 20 years. What does that mean? Uh, higher precipitation rates in storms and also uh, a lot of dryness. If you're wet, you're going to get wetter. If you're dry, you're going to get drier. And you're going to warm, and you're going to warm, and you're going to warm. Because your weather lords are drunk on carbon. That's right, your powers and all have been shoving so much carbon into your atmosphere that you're now in a little bit of a problem, aren't you? You are. You are. So as that CO2 goes into your atmosphere, there's a measurable effect. Your temperatures rise globally. That's basic science. That's not even, you know, if you took a jar of air and put some, some extra CO2 in that, it's going to get warmer if you put it in the sun than if there was less CO2. It's basic physics. And if it wasn't getting warmer, then you'd be in a new series of problems where your laws of physics were no longer working correctly. But your planet is actually bound to the laws of physics, and none of your death spiral has to do with changing the laws of physics. At least not yet. Powers and oligarchs are very uh, unique and uh, creative when it comes to destructing people and planets. Yeah, so anyways, uh, the last time that there was this much carbon in your atmosphere, that was uh, over 3 million years ago. Your Arctic was 15 to 30 degrees F warmer. Giant camels roamed the boreal forests of your Arctic. Uh, the carbon levels in your atmosphere got up to maybe 415 parts per billion during, during that epoch. And now you're uh, really right around 412, and that's increasing. Because your death spiral fascists are very interested in destructing you and your planet. And also during your Pliocene epoch, uh, which is the last time you had this much carbon, uh, your sea levels were 80 feet above where they are now, so think about that. 
if your house is uh, below, uh, I'm not saying that that's the level of sea rise you're going to get in your lifetime, but that's where you're headed. That's where you're headed with so much car. You know, and your Pliocene uh, Epoch, it really took a while, a gradual while to get up to 415 parts per million carbon in your atmosphere. It takes a while for that to happen. But really, this has just happened in the last, really in the last 50, 100, 200 years on your planet, getting to these really intense levels of carbon. Uh-oh, you're really uh, kind of in trouble, aren't you? You're in your death spiral, and it's obvious. That's completely obvious. If it's not obvious, it'll be obvious uh, soon enough. Because you need to repent. And also, take a quick moment to uh, consider donating to the Somerville Media Center. You know, just take that little moment to think about that. Uh, there are no requirements exactly, but you know, you should think about it, because here I am doing this, so why not do that? I don't know. Well, anyway, your death spiral is traveling your planet backwards through time. At this rate of carbon levels increasing in your atmosphere, which right now is about 40, 50 billion tons of carbon and inserted into your atmosphere every year. At this rate, by 2100, you could be entering the Eocene Epoch, 35 million years ago. That's the level of carbon that you'll have. And trust me, you don't want to travel your planet backwards in time to 35 million years ago. That's just one of those things you don't want to do. You don't even want to do it three million years ago, but you know, here you are now, you might as well enjoy what you can. But extreme weather events are on the rise globally. Precipitation rates and storms are rising. Areas that usually don't get flooded are getting flooded by a little bit too much free water from your weather lords. Oh, well, you're getting feedback looped. That's right. So when an area deals with a hot dryness, when there's too much hot dryness, that area crisps up. It dries out. And then it catches on fire, dumping even more carbon into your atmosphere. You know, your Amazon rainforest uh, used to be what is known as a carbon sink. The carbon would get sucked up by all those rainforest trees, and the carbon would be put away into the ground so nicely. That's just, you know, one of the ways in which how your planet works. But now it's a carbon source because your Amazon's on fire. In 2015, Indonesia every day put out more carbon from their wildfires than the entire U.S. economy every day. So that's a problem. You're getting feedback looped, you're in your death spiral, but really, uh, where's the repentance at? You're really gonna have to start considering repenting to your, to your weather wards. A part of your feedback loop as well, for every one C degree temperature rise, your air gets 7% more moist. That's right, so you're getting, your atmosphere is getting moister, allowing your, your atmosphere to store even more warmth with all that dank uh, moistness that could, that could hold warmth and travel that warmth around, uh, around the planet to places where maybe warmth shouldn't go, like your Arctic, which is where the warming is concentrated on your planet. And also uh, an increase of precipitation rates, as I said before. Your rain blobs now can uh, dump a lot of free water all at once. And you're seeing that globally. You're seeing that of Middle East, Yemen, Syria, Egypt, you're seeing intense flash floods like they never saw there before. Well, I, I, presumably at some point they saw a flood like that before, but you know. So every planet is different. And just a, just a FYI, Enos, I'm not a scientist, uh, but you know, here I am on your planet as a weather being from the weather realm, and I'm here to let you know about the science that does exist on your planet. And the death spiral mechanisms are different on every planet. Uh, not every planet with a dot sieve has water, oxygen, nitrogen-based life. There's all sorts of special life in your, in your uh, universe. And a lot of species don't even have faces. So, you know, uh, that's that. 
but what's similar on all these planets really throughout, and it's very common within your galactic cluster. I don't know what's wrong with your galactic cluster, but more and more powers and oligarchs are destructing uh, planets within your galactic cluster. A lot of death spirals a lot, and a lot of unsuccessful attempts at stopping death spirals. As us weather beings have bubbled up all over your uh, galactic cluster in the last uh, you know, two million years or so, there's something, there's, there's something wrong with your galactic cluster, so it's not just you. This isn't the first planet I've been to either, I, I understand. Well anyways, so another special thing is as, uh, your, as your temperatures uh, warm, your arctic ice is retreating uh, further and further and further. You're losing sea ice. All that sea ice had a nice bright reflective surface that would uh, beam back a lot of your uh, sun rays back into outer space, which was good. But now that that's not happening, uh, your jet streams are getting larger, thicker, and heading more north so that they could deliver that special energy all the way up into your Arctic so that you could see uh, rain events in your Arctic with temperatures 60 degrees above normal in uh, February. And imagine if Boston February had a day where it was 60 degrees above normal. Think about that. That would be 90 to 100 degrees. You're in your death spiral, and you need to repent your weather lords. <laughs> Anyways, just think about it. Just think about donating to the Somerville Media Center for the special little event where they've allowed me to come on to their TV station and do some weird things. But also uh, consider uh, repentance to your weather lords. Because it's not another special thing. It's not just your air that's warming either. Your oceans are also warm. Your oceans are warming at a faster rate than uh, you know everything else. So that's uh, that's a special little situation. And as your water warms, guess what happens? All that sickly warm surface water is starting to slow down the natural uh, currents of your planet. So as those uh, currents slow down and all that cold water from the Greenland ice sheet spills into your oceans, that causes a cold area, then the hot air, the hot, sickly, warm water is getting shoved up against your atmosphere, against uh, New England, against your coastlines. And guess what? Only half of your sea level rise is caused by melting ice. The other half is thermal expansion of water. So as all that hot, sickly, disgusting hot water gets shoved up against your atmosphere, I uh, get shoved up against New England rather. Level is rising faster than a lot of most other places in the world because of that. That block of hot, dank, disgusting water. I don't know how much time I have, so I'd just love to uh, start to lead you all in a guided fake weeping. So if you're watching at home, let's all just start the guided fake weeping, please. Ha 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 